Welcome to this module on DNA sequencing. This basic module will introduce you to the next generation sequencing technology platforms available, which have been discussed in the earlier module. Next generation DNA sequencing has assumed importance as a powerful tool which can be applied to rapidly decipher genomic information. For an overview, the steps involved in genome sequencing are DNA sample preparation, DNA sequencing, and sequence assembly. In order to prepare a sample for DNA sequencing, DNA should be intact and not sheared. The concentration of the DNA should range from 10,000 to 20,000 nanograms. And the purity of the DNA in terms of the absorbance at 260 and 230 nanometers should be more than 1.8. The DNA should not contain any traces of RNA. The first step in library preparation for DNA sequencing involves the shearing of DNA. In this step, long DNA fragments are subjected to shearing using enzymes or mechanical methods to generate short fragments with a size that can range from 200 to 1,000 bases, depending on the type of NGS platform will, which will be utilized. For instance, Illumina short read platforms require DNA with a range of 200 bases. However, large sequencing platforms, such as a single molecule real-time sequencing platform, may require fragments to be in the range of 10,000 to 20,000 bases. This is a depiction of the enzyme cleavage of DNA. As you can see, the enzyme cleaves the DNA to yield short fragments. The next step involves the ligation of adapters. Adapters are short synthetic DNA fragments which are linked to the 5' prime and 3' prime ends of DNA fragments. These adapters serve as tags which can sort out DNA sequences during the process of analysis. So in this case, you can see how the adapters bind to the 5' prime and 3' prime ends of the DNA sequence. Each library has a unique adapter tag as is indicated by the colors red, yellow, purple, and blue. During the process of DNA analysis, these tags are identified by the sequencing software. The next step involves quality assessment. Subsequent to the adaption of uh, lig ligation of adapters to the DNA sequences, the concentration and quality of DNA is assessed prior to loading onto the DNA sequencer. The fourth step involves DNA sequencing. DNA sequencing is usually carried out using NGS DNA sequencers in conjunction with appropriate cycle sequencing kit. These are proprietary and based on the sequencing manufacturer. The next step involves DNA sequence assembly. Once raw data is obtained from the sequencer, it needs to be assembled in order to generate information pertaining to the genome. We will depict how a basic bacterial genome sequence is assembled. So DNA sequence data obtained from NGS platforms consists of short DNA sequences, which range in size from 100 to 200 bases. Interpretation of this data requires the use of computational tools, such as sequence assemblers. The steps involved in sequence analysis are as follows. The first step involves the assessment of data quality. The second step involves the removal of adapters and tags. The third step involves the assembly of short reads. The fourth step involves annotation of reads. And finally, sequences which are assembled can be compared with available genomic data using the ba basic local alignment search tool algorithm, commonly known as BLAST. Let's go through the steps involved in DNA assembly. So the first step involves quality assessment. Quality is determined by the FRED quality score, which is designated as Q. In order for a sequence to be assembled, the quality score should be in the range of Q30 to Q50. Q30 implies that there will be a likelihood of error, which would be one in every 1,000 bases. Sequences with a 
quality score of 20 are generally rejected prior to assembly. The second step involves the removal of adapters. As you may recall, we have ligated adapters to the ends at the 5 prime and 3 prime end of our DNA sequences. These have to be removed prior to assembly as they represent superfluous information. The next step involves assembly of short reads. The short reads are assembled using software such as Velvet and Abyss. This software can assemble short reads into larger reads. Larger reads are termed as contigs. The next step involves annotation. During the process of annotation, the DNA sequence data is subjected to screening using software such as gene marks, which will identify protein coding open reading frames. Other software can identify features such as promoter binding sites, repeat regions, or RNAs. Annotation is required in order to identify the features of a known genome. Finally, your genome is ready for comparison. Comparison is done using algorithms such as the basic local alignment search tool designated as BLAST. This algorithm will align your sequence to a known genome at the gene bank database or other public databases. This is an example of a dot plot which compares two bacterial genomes. As you can see, the bacterial genome, which is the query, is designated on the y-axis and the reference genome is designated on the x-axis. The comparison in the terms of the dot plot reveals certain discrepancies in the genomes which are indicated within the circular regions. As you can see, those represent uh, regions at which the genomes are not similar. Finally, an analysis of metabolic pathways can be carried out using tools such as the rapid annotation using subsystem technology or RAST. RAST is an online tool which is a cloud computing tool. It will an analyze the genome in terms of the metabolic pathways and present your data in a graphical format as follows. This is a representation of a genome in terms of the RAST. As you can see, the genome has been analyzed and the pathways have been allocated to their respective functions. So as you can see, it, the designation has been done in terms of the cofactors, vitamins, and phenolic groups, as well as the pathways related to stress response. This platform offers you the ability to look through your genome and identify specific pathways, such as the pathway associated with carbon fixation, antibiotic resistance, or other functions which are unique to your particular bac bacterium. By comparing this pathway with the phenotype, it is you are able to obtain an overview of your genome sequence data. This concludes your tutorial on the basics of next generation sequencing and data assembly. Please complete your tutorial at the end of this session. Thank you.